प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए ह गणशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी आर बिलोवेड गणशाम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Jai Santo, Jai Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swaminara. After entering satsang, Bhagwan asks a question in the Vachnamrut, saying, what is the most difficult of tasks you can say after entering satsang and the answer when no one could answer Bhagwan says is to become a kantik meaning a firm devotee a singular minded devotee a devotee that has you can say certain standards and principles and lives according to only Bhagwan's wishes now that word devotee it doesn't only go for householders, but it applies to all santos, brahmacharis, householders, everyone. Meaning, if we think about it, everyone is the devotee of Bhagwan. So, when that word comes up, it applies for everyone. But, to become a staunch devotee, you need certain elements or ingredients. If I can give you an example, those who have made cupcakes at home or know how it's made, you need certain ingredients like all-purpose flour, baking soda, baking powder, sugar, essence, and then after that, you need to put it together in a process, step by step, and then after that you put it in the oven for a certain amount of time the temperature should not be not too high not too low and then finally your cupcakes come out but if the ingredients are a little off or not in the proper measurements then your cupcakes will not come out properly in the same way to become such a devotee to become such a firm devotee, a staunch devotee, there are certain ingredients involved. And in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan states in the Gadara 2nd chapter 61st Vachnamrut, the heading is called Niyam, firm faith in God and loyalty. Or in Gujarati translated, Niyam, Nishay, and Paksh. From that, I want to read a small paragraph and then we can analyze a charitra of how a single devotee possessed these three attributes and off of that you can see Bhagwan's Rajipo very easily. So Bhagwan says that thereupon Sri Jimard said a person who possesses three attributes can be called a staunch satsangi. What are these three attributes? Meaning as we talked about those ingredients in the same particular manner to become a firm devotee, staunch means firm. You need three elements, which is the first is stri is to strictly adhere to the niyams prescribed by one's ishtadev, meaning one's god, to such an extent that one would never forsake those disciplines even at the cost of one's life. The descriptions Bhagwan is giving are descriptions that <coughs> in that in that time devotees had portrayed and displayed in front of Bhagwan 
Now, off of these descriptions, Bhagwan is sharing, not names, but sharing that a, a devotee's criteria, a devotee's eligibility is or should be up to this standard. So the first one is that one should adhere to Bhagwan's niyams, meaning do's and don'ts. Uh, Shikshapatri, Bhagwan's uh, various, various agnas are in the Shikshapatri, do this, don't do that. These are all niyams. In Shikshapatri, there is niyams for everyone. There is not one person left that Bhagwan has just covered everyone and their prescribed niyams. If one follows them, then they're able to go and attain Bhagwan easily and please Bhagwan. So that's one. The second is, is to have extremely firm faith in God. So much so that one would never sway from it even if others or owns one mind were to raise doubts. It's very, very difficult to understand Bhagwan. But to have them to have them understand or to ha understand Bhagwan is something that needs to be done. There is an extremely firm faith in God, so much so that one would never sway from it, even if others were to, or if one minds were to. I'm reminded of our Puja Guruji. <coughs> what is firm faith? Well, at one time, as everyone knows, Puja Guruji opened the Gurukul, Kandari Gurukul, in 1994. And behind the Gurukul, you have to open up a trust. So you have to name the trust, and then the process can go on. So in that time, there was a very, very famous and rich person that came to Puja Guruji and said, I'm willing to give the money to pay for this whole school building construction, but only on one stipulation. Puja Guruji, Guruji said, sure, what is the stipulation? He said that, name your trust after my mother's, his long-worn mother who had passed away years ago. Name your trust after my mother. And that's the only way that I would give you all the funds to make this building. Puja Guruji said, I'm sorry. Puja Guruji had very, you can say, very much respect for all. You can see that in his nature. He did not ever insult anyone. So he addressed it in such a manner because this was such a high-end person. And Bhagwan says that one should never hurt a person who is very high-end in society. So Guruji, with respect, said, yeah, I understand what you want me to do, but I believe in one supreme go God, and that's Hare Krishna Maharaj. And I can only name that, you can say, I can only name this trust off of him. And the person was appalled, said that, I'm giving you all these fees. I'm paying for this building, which must cost a million, uh, at least a million dollars plus. And you can't accept my offer because, you, because of a single name? What kind of saint are you? And Guruji said, I am the saint of my supreme God, Hare Krishna Maharaj. And after that, that person went away. But in the, new f in the near future, a couple of weeks later, Puja Guruji named the trust Shri Hare Krishna Maharaj Kelavni Trust, which is still now in effect right now. It's been over 20 years. And that's how the story of how Puja Guruji, his faith in Bhagwan, and how he implements it is seen through his charitra. That second is faith, firm faith in God. And third, is to be loyal to those Vaishnav devotees who worship one's God, just as parents are loyal to their children, a son is loyal to his father, and a wife is loyal to her husband. One who possesses these three attributes completely can be called a staunch satsangi, or a firm devotee. Now, loyalty. 
that's something that has to do with courage something that has to do with when 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 we even hear the word loyal or loyalty first thing that comes up since we live in this country is you can say the army um, the battlefield a flag soldiers saluting things like this appear in our mind right away because loyalty is based off of you can say um, taking one side off of the another in this manner Bhagwan is talking about being loyal to the devotees of God just like how family members are loyal to each other you're loyal to your father or mother or sister or brother etc so on and so forth why because you believe them to be your family members you believe them to be your caretakers you believe them to be those who are not outside meaning those you believe them to be very dear to you due to that you take their loyalty in the same fashion Bhagwan says that my devotees should take the loyalty of m other devotees who are also mine who worship me these are the three elements or ingredients to become firm devotee as Bhagwan has described now let's take a look at a charitra where Bhagwan you can say test or at least Bhagwan is 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 completely uh, you can say impressed by uh, this devotee's niyam nishe and paksh so <coughs> start reading Sri Hari was particularly fond of Jina Bhai of Panchara meaning this is a charitra and it, it's just starting right off the charitra's title is called Jina Bhai to Akshara starts like this Sri Hari was particularly fond of Jina Bhai of Panchara Panchara is a village. Though he was the ruler of the village, Jinabai spent most of his time with Sri Hari and Garada, meaning he didn't have any kind of affection for his uh, village too much. He didn't really feel like he was a king. He was more of a humble devotee. He lived with Bhagwan. He understood Bhagwan's maima. That's why he lived there in Garada. On one such occasion, Jinabai did not return to Panchara for months. His family sent out a letter to Gadara to Gadara and addressed it to Jinabai. Jinabai received the letter and placed it under his seat without reading it. The letter was found, uh, the, the letter was followed by a second and third. Jinabai placed both of the letters with the first without reading them. His family grew worried and wrote a fourth letter but addressed it to Sri Hari, meaning Bhagwan, asking Bhagwan, is Jinabai with you in Gadara? He has not responded to any of our letters. Sri Hari called Jinabai. Bhaktaraj, why haven't you responded to the letters sent by your family? Jinabai replied, Prabhu, how could I respond to them if I did not bother to read them? Sri Hari realized that Jinabai was not interested in the material objects of or temporary relations of the world. His love and interest were governed by bhakti and satsang. Sri Hari often praised Jinabai's love and dedication to serve Bhagwan's bhaktas. In particular, Jinabai's dedication to serve Kamalsi, a barber from Mangral, touched Sri Hari. Now, the prasang is be now beginning, meaning the story is now beginning. But this was just kind of like a, uh, to build Jinabai's background, you can understand that his family would worry would send letters at that time they didn't have phones so they can call or leave voicemails or text messages so they would give some money to a messenger give the letter to him and tell them to send it to this village the messenger would take a couple of days when it reaches they would give it to you know the you can say postman there and it would be given to whoever it's needed that's how the messaging system worked no phones, no text messaging. Can we imagine that? A life without phones or text messages? Right now we see in the world that if you even sit in a city bus or on an airplane or even in public, if there's 10 people sitting around you, nine out of the 10 
will be using their cellular phones. Maybe they're talking on the phone, maybe they're texting on the phone. Who knows what they're doing? But it's been, it has become such an addi addictive habit that it's, it's something that uh, it can't be changed or it can't be reversed. That's how much phones are now becoming something m more like a, a body part. A, you know how we have an arm, a leg. Just like that, a phone is another body part of ours. So if we can think about this scenario where analyzing it, that letters were sent in that fashion and that time, then can we put our phone down for one week and send messages to whoever we need to in a different way using email, even maybe telling someone else to call and tell them. We can test our mind to see how much we're attached to our phone. And in that time, what? So even in these charitras, prasangs, if we compare it even right now and analyze it, we can find many things that in that time, how they lived in a simple ma fashion is not the same as right now. And due to that, it's keeping us away from Bhagwan and his Ekantik Sadhpurush. Due to that factor, it's not letting us attain the happiness of Bhagwan, his idol. And that's why we struggle. But if we can understand this factor that a phone is used just for communication and it's not used for, you can say, your life's work. Some phones are so much advanced that now you can say it's a mini computer and you can just do everything off of that phone. Then what else do you need? You can, if you are living off your phone, downloading various apps that your phone can do for you, pay your credit, pay your bills via your, uh, you know, your phone, etc., so on and so forth, then what is there? Your life is your phone. So in this fashion, we should think that in that time, if there was this kind of messaging system and everyone lived happily and messages were received, then maybe we should slow it down a little bit, take niyams, maybe when we have exams that are in that time, turn our phone off or use it only to a limited time. So that can also help our satsang increase. But anyways, now here's the story. Now Bhagwan is saying that in particular, Jinabe's dedication to Kamulsi, a barber from Mangro, touched Srihari. Now the person is beginning. Jinabe had traveled to Mangro, which is a village for business. He went to Kamulsi's house to check on the barber. Happy to see Happy to see Jinabai, Kamulsi poured his heart out to Jinabai. He wept as he shared details about his illness. Kamulsi also mentioned that no one in his family was willing to care for him. Now Kamulsi Bai, his occupation was a barber, but he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminare, a staunch devotee, a devotee that had no other, you can say, uh, desire but for God and to please devotees. But there was an illness that he had. Due to that illness, his family members lost interest in him. In the Vachnamrut, it says that during our, at the time of one's deathbed, those who are relatives around lose interest in that very person. Now, thinking about that, we harbor affection for our relatives until the end and then what they lose interest and in maybe in a couple months maybe they weep for, weep for six months or a year and they lose interest and they forget about you and they go on with their life but if we can understand that yes you should live with your relatives you should talk with them but you should understand them to be there. But in your heart, you should only have Bhagwan and his and his and his son as your primary source of you can say affection, primary source of you can say attaining strength 
spiritual strength and strength throughout your life if we can take this way then also Bhagwan would be pleased but going back to the Charitra the barber Kamalsi was happy to say, see uh, Jinabai but obviously he described his illness and he wept because no one was willing to care for him his family members Jinabai decided to take Kamalsi with him to with him to Panchara, he went to the he went to the store and hired three laborers to carry Kamalsi's cot to Panchara. Meaning, Kamalsi was in such a critical situation where he could not do or care for his body at all. Meaning, going to the bathroom, eating, nothing like this. So he was pretty much at bed rest all this time. And so what Jinabai did was he went to the market and he picked up three laborers and paid them and told them to pick up or now Bhagwan will say or this Charitra will explain he could not find a fourth laborer so he found three of them obviously a cot or a bed has four legs and so he could so he carried the fourth corner on his shoulder so what he did was he took the uh, told the three laborers to take each side and then on the fourth fourth you can say uh, the leg he himself the king of Panchara at that time to rule villages very rare at that time to hold a lot of money to hold land to have people underneath you very rare and when someone receives power then it's very hard to do such kinds of things or such kinds of sevas like this so even without that, thinking that Kamalsi with Mahima is a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, thinking of Bhagwan's greatness, thinking of Kamalsi's greatness, he picked up the fourth leg. And let's see what happens. The entire village stared at the ruler as he walked while lifting a barber's cot. Meaning the devotees of God should not have an eye for this world if this devotee is younger than us or if this devotee is older than us or if this devotee is a lawyer and I am only a garbage man devotees of God don't have any vision in this world they look at one soul of how you can say how qualified how many qualities good qualities this devotee has and off of that one performs seva one performs uh, you can say one admires that devotee that's a true characteristic of a devotee if one looks at one's outer self what clo clothes one what clothes one wears or how one speaks or anything then there is no way that one can determine in reality that this is a great great devotee because he is in contact with Supreme God Himself and His Ekantik Satpurush. One becomes fulfilled with very, very you, you, say, you can see, you can experience that one becomes joyful by just even having the darshan of such kind of devotees. And that's true satsang. Because in the Vachnamrut, more than you can see, the most talked about principle in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamrut is taking the good qualities over the bad qualities of devotees believing everyone to be divya it's it's something that bhagwan has thought through so much and implemented it into the vachramrut that there is no way that a devotee can fall unless he doesn't abide by the the vachramrut so the king himself carried the load on one of the shoulders and they moved across the village and everyone just stared they were in awe they could not believe it Jinabe brought Gamalsi home and personally cared for him phys physical and financial needs meaning everything he took care of him his body bathroom feeding him and financially providing him with all the necessities that he needs to, uh, to uh, you know recover his health now going back to that formula the three ingredients niyam nishe baksh 
we can see that two are already covered. Nishe, he had faith in God, and due to that faith, he was able to do, or he was, and he's able to serve the devotee of Bhagwan Swaminath. And without faith, one would never be able to serve, because they would just think it's a sick person on a bed. Who cares? But connecting Bhagwan to that devotee and then doing his seva that's what Nishe is according to this charitra and loyalty we're going to see that very soon but Niyam, Niyam was covered because Kamal Si <coughs> Jinabai had Niyams that he followed he was a strict devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and due to that we can see that even if he saw such a sick person he did not forsake his dharma his niyams of not serving other devotees we can see his humility there so moving on the final element loyalty will be revealed very soon so Jinabe brought Kamalsi home and personally cared for him and his physical and financial needs Jinabe faced stark re resistance from his own family but he was not phased, meaning at that time, his family was like, why are you serving for a barber? What has this barber done for you? You're the king. You're the ruler of Panchara. Look at how many villages you have. Look at how many people you have underneath you. And a barber? It's just something that's unusual on your side. But these people could not understand Jinabai's drashti, Jinabai's vision. Only Bhagwan knew and Jinabai knew. So one evening, Kamalsi was suffering from a terrible headache. He had a fever. Jinabai asked his sister for crushed black pepper to treat the headache. In that time, obviously there wasn't Tynol or Advil or Mortrin or any kind of these medicines. So they used, uh, according to the Ayurvedic drashti, you can say black pepper. Now, black pepper is a remedy, old school style, that can relieve a headache. And what Jinabe wanted to do was he wanted to pretty much smear the headache, or smear the black pepper on on his forehead, so the, the, the you can say the heat of the headache would be extracted into the prep pepper. It's, it's a remedy that works that they used in that time. So what he did was he looked around a little bit. He couldn't find the black pepper. So he asked his sister. His sister replied, Brother, there is no ground black pepper in the house. Okay, no problem. The next day, Jinave asked his sister for ground black pepper to treat his own headache. Now, Jinave must have developed a headache. So to treat that, obviously there was that one remedy, black pepper. So the next day, no one had went to the store or market that day or the next day in the morning, but Jinabai asked his sister. His sister rushed inside the kitchen. Ground, he, she grounded the pepper and offered it. Brother, should I apply it to your forehead? Jinabai was furious. He pushed the black pepper away and shouted, I thought we did not have any black pepper. I will not use anything that is not available for Sri Hari's bhaktas. You see the faith? Also, we saw his loyalty. His own sister. Now, behind her own sister, his sister's motive, in case Jinabai or anyone got sick in the family, then she was saving that black pepper for them. But she knew that black pepper was inside the home. But for a barber, who would waste that black pepper on a barber? So when Jinabe asked the first time, she lied. And she said that we don't have it. The next time, the next day, when Jinabe asked again, when he developed a headache, right away, she rushed to the kitchen and made, made the black pepper paste and brought it to him. And he was furious to see that how could this be possible? So, Jinabai became very, very upset. And he took the paksh 
of Bhagwan's devotees by saying that I will not use anything that is not available for Sri Hari's bhaktas. Soon after, Jinabai was diagnosed with a light, life-threatening illness, meaning he himself was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. The healer withdrew care from the ruler. Sri Hari heard of Jinabai's failing health and rushed to Panchara. Sri Hari sat on Jinabai's cot and asked, is there anything you would like me to take care of? Does your son need a guardian to oversee his, you can say his education? Jinabai smiled faintly and said, Prabhu, meaning to Bhagwan, what is there to say? If he remains your bhakta, you will always look after him. If he decides not to live according to your niyams and agna, then you will not care for his moksha, even if I ask you to. Therefore, bless him with your satsang and samagam. Jinabha had understanding that I do not want my son to become wealthy or, you know, rule my kingdom or his education. But more than that, make him into your devotee and give him your samagam, your son samagam, your satsang, so he can also strive to become a great devotee. Sri Hari was moved by Jinabai's con conviction. We're reminded of jo I'm reminded of Yogi Swami and how a very prominent saint came to see him at his last stage when he was in that accident, the burning accident. And at that time, Swami himself asked that may my faith remain firm in Maharaj and Guruji. I don't want to become healed. I don't want to become my body to become healed. I don't want anything. But my faith, may it remain firm throughout this whole, you can say, time of Maharaj and Puja Guruji. That saint was astonished to see such kind of understanding from such a saint who lived only nine years as a saint. And it still boggles my mind and I can't ponder over it that how had he developed such kind of a, an understanding and it was shown in the Vachamra that says that one's understanding is only you can say displayed in adverse circumstances well it still boggles me that how did he portray that understanding in such a critical time and it it's something that's uh, I hold very dear and something that I remember very often because such kind of, you can say, understanding is very rare. And, and only in nine years, and not even looking at the years, moreover, you can say wisdom comes as one grows older. But such kind of wisdom was, you can say, portrayed by such a sadhu, which showed his understanding. In the same way, Jinabai's understanding was shown and Bhagwan was pleased. Sri Hari turned to Jinabai's mother, Gangaba, and asked, Mother, what if I was to give Jinabai the kingship of Jun Junagar? Gangaba exclaimed, Prabhu, that would be wonderful. Sri Hari continued, Why stop there? I can make him the ruler of Vadodara or even Dili. Bhagwan then, Bhagwan, that would be wonderful too. That is not enough, mother. I want to grant him a place in the heavens, maybe Golok, Swedip, Badrikasham, or Vaikun. What if I gave him the kingdom of Akshradam? Meaning Bhagwan was preparing Gangaba, the mother of Jinabai, for Jinabai's, you can say, leave of this earth physically, and his Atma going to Akshradam. So slowly but surely, Bhagwan was testing Gangaba and asking these kinds of questions. Gangaba was overjoyed and obser observed, Bhagwan, there is not a soul that can live without your mercy. Sri Hari raised his right hand and said, so be it. Jinabe left his mortal body and returned to Akshadam right there and then. Gangaba wept at her son's side, meaning obviously as a mother, yes, she would feel that 
my son, the ruler of Panchara, is gone. But Gang Gangaba passed her examination because she let go of his her son with Bhagwan's, you can say, vigorous question and answer session. And due to that, Bhagwan was pleased. But Sri Adi replied, Mother, I gave you what you asked for. There is no need to cry. Jinabai is now sitting in my Akshardham. Sri Hari made the arrangements for Jinabai's funeral. The sadhus and devotees insisted that Sri Hari let someone else carry Jinabai's body, but Sri Hari was adamant. This request came as a surprise to all the devotees given that Sri Hari did not carry Jinabai's own younger brother's body to the pry. Sri Hari carried Jinabai's body to the funeral pry for several more steps than Jinabai had taken with Kamalsi's cot in Mangrove. He accompanied the funeral pro uh, procession all the way to Damodar Kund. For Sri Hari, his devotee was his family. Bhagwan himself carried Kamo, uh, Sri Hari's, or Jinabai's cot, his, you can say his casket, if we can put it in that term, all the way to Damodar Kund, a nearby place where he was going to get his body was going to get burned. Bhagwan doing this, how, what kind of Rajipo would he have, or would Bhagwa, is Bhagwan even displaying? In Yogi Swami's prasam, when Yogi Swami's body was brought to Kandari Gurukul, Puja Guruji himself, along with other prominent saints of the Sampradaya, carried Puja Yogi Swami to that place of, you can say, cremation. Thinking about that, Pujaguruji, understanding that this was not an ordinary saint, we can see Pujaguruji's Divya Bhav, we can see Pujaguruji's vision, we can see Pujaguruji how he looks upon everyone, not be it small or big. In the same way, Bhagwan. Bhagwan's nature is Bhagwan had that nature and that nature is now in our Puja Guruji we can see that but through this Charitra it's very very you can see easily said that Bhagwan is pleased by a devotee that has Niyam Nishay and Paksh and moreover Bhagwan is pleased by such kind of characteristics of helping other devotees and due to that Bhagwan himself came in the service at the end of Jinabai and carried his cot all the way and gave him his ultimate sukh of his murti in Akshardham. We can also become such kind of devotees slowly but surely by the strength and support of our Ekantik Sat Purush Puja Guruji and Puja Santo and by listening to Katha performing Sant Samagam, reading Sastras like Vachnabrit and various char Charitras so we can understand and analyze our life in such a manner. As for our announcements, again, it's year 2017. Its registration is up on our website, theswaminarayan.org. If you are nearby, it's in Tampa, Florida. Or if you are available in that time, July 6, 7, 8, 9, please make sure to register. Uh, the registration is open for uh, at least another four months, and then it will be closed. You have some time to decide. Also, our social media for Loyadam Youths, we have it for Facebook, Google+, and Instagram. All you have to do is just search Loeda Mutes on any of these social media mediums and you'll be able to uh, log in and uh, access will be granted to you after uh, your background is checked and you'd be able to uh, you know, enjoy uh, various news of uh, Loeda Mutes, Puja Guruji and various events. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.